Swami Vivekananda is something which we need to focus on. Uh, we talked about self-awareness. A self-awareness in terms of what's happening in society around us. The Ninibaya case has actually represented a facet in our society which is depicting a lot of angst that's, that is existing at this point of time. Where are we heading as humanity? Where are we heading as society? I think these are the questions that we need to ask. And of course, I am a part of the biggest democracy of the world. The country which is made by the people, for the people and it is of the people. I become very happy when one of the Indians win the Olympics or any, uh, even if it's a small medal like bronze. And I'm very happy when India wins the world cup of cricket. But of late, when I wake up and I read the newspaper, I'm shaken. I do not know how to react, reading the various news which come these days. I seem to quit. I don't want to be an Indian reading room. And I think many of us feel the same. What do we generally do? We regret. And many of us pray. And there are red placard. Proud to be an Indian, terrified to be an Indian woman. You know, that actually touched my heart. Uh, there is a person, there is an Indian there who is actually proud to be an Indian, but she is terrified. Now, is this the state that we want to, our country to be in? Do we want us, the Indians, our people, to be terrified of being in our own country? Now, that is the state of affairs right now. The point is now who do we blame or how do we bring about the change so that that terror goes away. I would not go into law or politics or even self. I would like to state another incident. It's a very deep rooted cause that I would like to bring about. When we drive on our roads, we see a lady driving on the car. What we do say is, yeah, is that right? Why is there this discrimination? Why are we saying that a girl who is driving a car might just falter for a bit saying that you are here to benefit the lady? Is that right? <coughs> Why is there this discrimination? So this is my main belief that there should not be any discrimination. It's in our society that we started off that with women being a part of only the household, taking care of the family, taking care of the children and that's it. And now that the women are actually moving out of their homes, and they are moving into positions that are much more greater than men. The men are actually terrified and this is what is leading the problems that are there in this country. You would see men being scared that their wives are actually earning more than them. You would be men thinking that yeah, the neighbor's lady is actually my boss. So they feel a sense of insecurity. And that I feel is the cause. That is actually, that is the main cause that is actually ballooning up into the Acts of aggression. <coughs> the state takes up the responsibility for the juveniles. It's a very good concept. But don't you think that is being misused to some extent? Because if you say, see the Nirvya case, so one of the accused is actually a juvenile and he was supposed to be the most brutal amongst them. Right. So should a law such as, uh, if it's a rarest of the rarest case, then uh, they should be given as punishment under, in, under a juvenile act? Point is, what I feel is that. India, the Indian law that is there, which is actually quite inspired from the British law that we have, it gives a chance to everyone. I understand and I do agree that he was one of the, he stated to be the most brutal among the first few days. But the point is, be it whatever it will happen, it is he is not guilty until proven guilty. He is uh, innocent until proven guilty, whatever I say. So he has been given a chance and since he is a juvenile and this in 18 to 18 years, we actually do not see a person being done that much. So, I believe that the Indian law change coming from uh, within, uh, which is uh, what you said, talked about David Lynch's uh, campaign, and the other is uh, you cannot legislate good behavior. Uh, we do business communication, in fact, uh, we are also kind of embedding ethics in all our courses to be accredited in one of those accreditations. 
why can't he have gender sensitization is also one of the things because uh, and i think it's a good uh, thing to start right now since there is uh, there is this panel discussion i see a huge audience i see interest in that and i also see the topicality so gender sensitization as a you know as a standalone or even integrated into the courses can be a good beginning so you know this panel discussion can come to some kind of conclusion in which people uh, can start be gender sensitized and maybe the these schools are a good way uh, to show the way to show the kind of uh, path to other educationists or to other education streams uh, i do not know what your thoughts are on this well uh, if i may just respond first go on and ask the, the, the panel to as well i think this is a, a very profound and good idea um i'm aware in, in universities um, in the west around quite a few countries where these topics are taken up very seriously and do they raise awareness of what the difficulties are what the challenges are and what can and should be done in order to face those difficulties and i'd just like to ask what what is the view of what what is currently being done here and what more could be done see uh, i think it's already been done uh, already as it mentioned in the cbc curriculum of the cc continuous evaluation is already inducted uh, as part of the life skills the gender sensitization at b school level I, as part of our communication courses we talk about uh, etiquette uh, we talk about uh, corporate communication communicate team with uh, uh, the other agenda uh, that's that's a why from p1 will be speaking for the motion <laughs> first i'd like to quote something because i am a woman I have to work hard to succeed because if I fail, they will say, "Look, she failed." They will say, "Woman failed." Women always fail. With this quote by Louis Wayne, who was the first ambassador, it is 25 percent. So this I am going to end this by saying that we talk a lot about how to take India to the next stage, make it a global superpower. The time has come that the financials and the economists. Look at the real problem where it is to develop and give a prize to these women so that if they succeed, if they can break out of the shackles as we discussed, that is underestimated. So to start off with, I want to quote uh, one, uh, you know, I want to quote one uh, instance, like in one instance, a quote like uh, the first woman of world, the E, was for men. So don't you think that the there's a need of those tolerance numbers actually arising? Is a question mark on the system? Yes, that uh, that is a point. But it's only about India and not in general. When, no, we are uh, from India, and India is a land full of gods and goddesses, an equal number actually. And these Mahabharata are epic. The <coughs> towards women are all around the country has gone so bad that now women are being seen more of an asset or let's say like an accessory. Um, and also, I would like to look at this from various angles. Looking from a political angle, uh, many might say, like my friend was telling, that we are Asian local and so and so. That's true. But in the India, we have a quota to have women in our parliament. We have 30 percent, and we are struggling for past two decades or so to implement it. Still, it is not being implemented. Uh, we need women in politics. They are being undervalued. They say she is just a woman.
comes second. Please do come for it. And uh, wait for it. I'll just wait for it till you are here. And uh, please raise the audience. And the best speaker is Aishwarya. All right. So once again, thank you to all. You may please take your seat back, and you will have a moment of glory during the next week.